I consume to the gentleman from Texas. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Uh, it is an honor to uh, once again uh, sponsor uh, this Domestic Violence Awareness Month uh, resolution. I want to commend uh, Judge Green for uh, working with me on this issue. Uh, you did make a mistake, however. You said we know each, we've known each other 20 years. I'm sorry. It's been 30 years since we were both young buck lawyers in the courthouse doing battle uh, uh, in Houston, Texas. So uh, it's been a long time. Uh, but uh, you are correct. This is an issue that must continue uh, to come to the awareness of the American people, that dom domestic violence is something that uh, is uh, unfortunately continuing in this country. Uh, Thirty-five percent of the murder victims uh, uh, that were killed in 2008 were killed at the hands of, of people they knew, intimate partners, 35 percent of them murdered by people that were close to them. In 2007, crimes by intimate partners counted for 23 percent of all crimes against women. In a single day in 2009, 65,000 victims were treated by domestic violence programs, but due to lack of resources and funding, uh, many of those, uh, almost 10,000, were turned away because there was no resources to take care of them. Uh, we have uh, a growing need and presence of domestic violence shelters throughout the country, and they have fewer and fewer resources to take care of these women who seek refuge from someone that they knew who has been trying to assault them or has succeeded in assaulting them. Uh, Congress must, uh, of course, uh, pass the reauthorization of the Family Violence Prevention and Services Act. Uh, victim service providers are on the front lines of defense against domestic violence. And this funding is vital to the treatment and reduction of domestic violence. Uh, I spent all my legal career before coming here uh, as a prosecutor and then a criminal court judge. So I was always in the courthouse doing criminal cases. And I saw the result uh, of what happens when people who live in the family situation commit crimes against other family members. And it's something that has to cease in this country. And it's also something that we as a community need to be aware of. Unfortunately, many times, uh, courts don't take these cases seriously. Um, one of my favorite people is uh, Yvette Cade from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, Yvette Cade it was a real person, still is a real person. And all these cases are about real people, Mr. Speaker. And on October the 10th, 2005, Yvette Cade's uh, estranged husband, Roger Hargrave is his name. He uh, uh, he and his wife were not getting along, so he sought her out. He went to the business where she worked, a video store, walked inside. He had a bottle full of gasoline. He came up to her, and he poured that gasoline over her head, and he set her on fire. Yvette Cade, victim of domestic violence. She survived that brutal assault. And thanks to a passerby that saw all this happen, she was, the fire was put out uh, in the parking lot. It seems as though that uh, the judge involved in this case, Prince, Co judge, Prince George County Judge Richard Palumbo, had already lifted a protective order against Hardgrave if he had not lifted that protective order to keep him away from his estranged wife, she may not have had this brutal assault committed against her. Now, Hargrave is serving life in prison for the assault, setting his wife on fire, but Ms. Yvette Cade has 60 percent third-degree uh, burns over her body. She's had 19 surgeries. She survived this brutal attack. She is a remarkable woman. She has the spirit that I, it surprises me. She has the spirit that she does. But she is just one of thousands of people, Mr. Speaker, that are assaulted in the family. And it continues. And we in this society must make sure that it is socially unacceptable to hurt somebody in the family. Uh, my grandmother, who was the most influential person in my life, she lived to be the age of 99. Uh, uh, 
uh, Mr. Green, Judge Green would like this. She never forgave me for being a Republican. Uh, anyway, that's a different issue. But uh, she always said, you never hurt somebody you claim you love. And that is a true statement, and it always has been. You never hurt somebody you claim you love. And we need to send that message out throughout the nation, especially in these family situations. And young males need to understand that if they get a relationship with a young woman, they never hurt them if they claim they love. So it's an honor for me to support this. I honor also and recognize the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, all those wonderful organizations that are out there taking care mainly of women who find themselves in desperate situations because someone they supposedly loved them treated them so bad. And with that, uh, I yield back the remainder of my time. The gentleman from Texas yields back. Does the gentleman from Louisiana continue to reserve?